I'm Susan French with the Longleaf Alliance, and I'm so excited to be talking about prescribed burning on private lands today. The benefits of prescribed burning are well documented and well known, but some landowners need further technical assistance, financial assistance, or training to feel comfortable and ready to burn their own property. Let's talk with some landowners today about their personal experiences. I've been burning for years, decades now, and it's still exciting. I still love it. It's still scary, but yet satisfying when you get through. We cover all of the bases. We try to do everything according to the burn plan and according to the rules. And I believe if you are prepared for anything, then if you have something happen, you're hopefully prepared to handle it. But we do very careful burning and under what we hope are perfect conditions. As a landowner, prescribed burning your property every couple years is a winning proposition for everyone. Prescribed burning creates many benefits, including reducing wildfire risk from grown up rough, creating wildlife habitat, controlling insects and disease, managing competing plant vegetation, and recycling nutrients. I'm Lucretia. I'm a grandmother. I've been burning since 2013. I have taught my grandchildren how to burn and, and their friends how to burn. And if they can do it and I can do it, you can too. My advice to the landowner, when they want to burn, they need to learn about it. Be familiar with burns. It's nothing to be frightened of. And if you want to take a course, there's a lot of the courses out of Waycross, Delonica, Longleaf Alliance. They, they give conferences and they give uh, weekend field trips so that you can see fires and learn about it. But you need to learn about it before you do it. You can't just walk out and start a match and do a burn. You need to be familiar with it. So I suggest people to, to read. Contact your uh, local NRCS or your uh, forestry service and let them teach you and help you along for that first burn. And once you get your property to a manageable state, you yourself can burn. It's a, a very easy thing to do. You just have to make sure you burn under the right circumstances. Smoke management is one of the main aspects of safety and liability during prescribed burning. Smoke management involves choosing to burn under weather conditions that don't affect sensitive areas, such as schools, hospitals, and major roads. You can learn more about smoke management techniques by taking the Certified Prescribed Fire Manager course through the Georgia Forestry Commission. Special care should be taken when burning around structures on your property, such as a home, by raking additional fire lines and creating an additional black line by burning. Other vital planning techniques for landowners include preparing a burn plan to organize important elements like objectives, weather parameters, and equipment needs, having a burn unit map to outline fire breaks and hazards, finding and interpreting fire weather forecasts and measuring on-site weather, and understanding the different ignition patterns used in different fuels, topography, and weather conditions. Important resources can be found in the comment section below, including information from the Longleaf Alliance and our friends at the Southern Fire Exchange. When you start your burns, you call the forestry department and they will tell you whether or not it's adequate to do a burn. They will tell you whether or not the smoke dispersion will be right, whether or not there's going to be any inversions later on in the day, which would cause the smoke to stay on the ground, which would make the highways very unsafe. They'll make sure that the humidity is right and all conditions are right for a burn. And once you get your permit and you have all your safety equipment together, you start your burn. But when you see everything burning at first, it is sort of frightening when you first see it. You see fire, you see smoke, and you wonder if it's going to do any damage to your trees. But the next day, the ground's going to be black. It'll be like scorched earth. But then give it a few days, you're going to see little green plants coming up, and it'll be violets, or it could be other wildflowers that grow in your area. And then you, it makes you feel good. And then a couple months later, you'll start seeing ferns. And soon you'll start hearing quail or you'll hear turkeys in the background because now they've got the habitat that they've been wanting. Burning during different seasons of the year means you'll see different plant responses. Burning during the growing season can really help promote the growth of wiregrass, which is a valuable native species. I'm Jerome Murphy and I have been burning longleaf now for 27 years. One reason it held me back for years of growing season burns was the concern of the difference in temperatures, you know, versus dormant season in the wintertime whenever it's really cold. And uh, I was really nervous and I've known about this probably for 10, 15 years, so to speak, and, and it, uh, it took me a while. I was 
kind of like jumping off the high dive is the way I say it is I was just scared but once I've ever done the first one I feel very comfortable about it I had the Georgia Forestry Commission to come out and help do the burn and everything went great far beyond my expectation very much a transition and I see a great amount of change in my property now different plants and the suppression of hardwoods which initially that's what I wanted to do without doing any kind of site prep or anything we wanted to control hardwoods so that was initially what I was trying to accomplish and so now I will be doing these on my own now again. Making a budget is vital for the planning process. We will help you understand the cost of burning, insurance, and possible sources of funding assistance. There is also a rentable burn trailer with all the tools you need to get started. I'm James. I'm just getting into the uh, into the pine tree uh, business. Going to be planting some long leaves this winter. A very affordable resource that the Georgia Forestry Commission gives local landowners is a fire trailer here for an um, inexpensive cost. Uh, inside the trailer, you have hand tools up front. You have access to a blower that makes a fire break for you, and also water bags that you carry with you that help put out fires. Financial assistance is available to private landowners through programs like the Georgia Sentinel Landscape Pilot Project. This program provides cost share funds to landowners to implement prescribed burning, plow fire breaks, and obtain burn plans. You can either get cost sharing through the NRCS, which is very easy to do. You contact your local um, NRCS office. When we had our, our burns and used the Georgia Forestry, they would uh, pay for about half of it and we would pay for the other half. But it comes back full circle. When you burn, you're increasing the value of your property. Um, your trees grow bigger, um, your land looks better, you have wildlife, and it's aesthetically pleasing, yet it's also increasing the value of your property. It's just very exciting and very rewarding when you see how it can change the landscape and, and improve the habitat so much. We're so excited that you're ready to join the FIRE family in the southeastern U.S. Contact us directly at the Longleaf Alliance so we can connect you with the best resources for your area. Also make sure to follow our social media pages on Facebook and Instagram for the latest updates on trainings and events. Mm -hmm.